Hi guys and welcome back. During this video today what I'm going to be going over is basically two books that I've read this week uh, back to back and it's kind of just drawn from me the comparisons between them and how two seemingly similar um, genres, plot lines, things like that can be so similar yet there are stark differences and this will also pull into just kind of my uh, monthly review of all the books that I've read this month. Now just a disclaimer, there is going to be some subjects in this as one or two other books, well yeah two of the books basically have one extreme to the other um, in terms of grim dark spiciness and things like that. So yeah let me get into the two books that I've read this week for you guys. So just as another side note, I do have made notes on my phone. So if you see me checking out that, that's just so I stay on track. And I've made some notes that I just wanted to mention throughout this. Now, the two books that I've read this week back to back um, would be The Poppy War by R.F. Kang. Um, this book was recently done in a recent haul of the ones. Um, I believe it was the second video on my channel. And then this one I didn't actually do uh, a haul on, but I did buy it shortly after the Poppy War, and that is The Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaris. Um, yeah, so basically what happened is I read The Poppy War first, and then this one second. Um, in terms of reading speed, so I did find that The Fourth Wing is a lot easier to read than The Poppy Wars. Um, the Poppy Wars took me a good half of the book to really get into. I'd say it took me probably about five days to read in total. Um, the first three days was just the first half, honestly, getting through. Um, I believe off the top of my head it split into a few parts and it was just getting through the first section that was really difficult. But once it kind of like picked up speed, I finished it within two days. Um, now the fourth wing, I actually read in two days. I read half and then the other half and actually finished it the day that I'm filming this now. Literally probably about half an hour ago. Uh, so that's also why I've made some notes because this one's way fresher in my head than this one. Now, just a quick overview of the two separately. So the Poppy War follows a war orphan um, called Rin. She basically goes into a prestigious military school. Um, it's a fantasy military style based in, I believe, China's 20th century. Um, and it's a genre that I came across, a word for a genre I came across today that I've not really paid much attention to, grim dark. Definitely on those vibes of grim dark. Um, now, like most kind of stories that kind of follow this plot. Um, she goes into a prestigious school, she's from a very poor province um, and she basically has to survive with lots of obstacles, people bullying her, death threats, um, having to find her power when everyone else seems to already have it and also as it's called the Poppy War, there it is basically around training soldiers and enabling them to go out and fight. Uh, I believe they're meant to be there for three years um, and during that time they're to train, hone in on skills and they basically cut their numbers after the first year um, and you get chosen into a subject which is the one you would specialise in. Now in this book she gets chosen um, for two and picks one I believe and she basically goes down one of the more questionable routes to, compared to her peers and discovers ultimate power basically um, and it does follow along lines of fighting to survive. Uh, there is some slight love interest. Um, it doesn't really turn into a relationship, it's more of butterflies fluttering around your stomach and um, you know you look at someone you're just like oh wow but that quickly disappears. The main theme of this story I would say is the violence. Um, as soon as you hit kind of the halfway button point you get thrown into the fighting and it does get very graphic. It describes um, war injuries and battle injuries human torture, both alive and dead. And there is also mention of rape 
and the rape in the story is very descriptive. So yeah, if I wouldn't recommend this as a teen book. Um, if you know you're looking at a child to read it or you're looking at it for yourself and you know you're not into that stuff or can't read it. Um, I'd say some of the description is on par with Game of Thrones, um, just as a really good kind of baseline, but I would say some of it is above that, just from the way they tell it, and so far it's just, yeah, I feel like with Game of Thrones they build up to this, um, on this one they really don't, it goes from quite a slug of a story to get through the history and the building of characters and basically I felt that it took me a while to connect to a lot of the characters in the story. I'm like, okay, cool, this person's a cool person, but why do I care? And then until the second half, I was like, that's why I care. Okay, but even then, towards the end, during the ending, um, it definitely goes up in a blaze of fire. And anyone that's read it would know what I mean by that. Um, but I don't know, there was some towards the end where people, some things happen to certain characters and I'm like, why do I care? Because I don't. So. Yeah, on Goodreads at the moment it's got a 4.17 star, which is pretty good. I would probably give it a 4 star, maybe just a flat 4, nothing special. Um, yeah, that's it really on that one. And in terms of The Fourth Wing, so very similar again, someone, um, her name is Violet and she's 20, whereas in this one she, I believe in this book she's about 16. This book, she's 20. So Violet is uh, basically her whole life has spent training to go into the scribes, um, which is um, oral historian, writing it down, basically documenting history um, and knowing all the rules. So she's trained for that. She's very academic, very um, book smart. And her mother, who is a general of their race, um, and their kingdom basically forces her to join the Riders Squadrant. Quadrant, sorry. And from the start, it's a fight to survive. She's often described as weak, frail, not gonna survive. And there's several characteristics um, where she has to overcome just a lot of things. Uh, there's a lot of rules in there as well, and it's team-based, so even People inside of her team can't kill her, but people outside the team who see her as a wink kiss link. And even then that doesn't stop some of them from just trying to kill each other. Um, so yeah, this book, I would say from the start, I mean, within the first chapter, there are people dying and it's just a matter of life in the book. You get to the point after reading it, a, f a chapter and a half where you're just like, oh, another one's dead. Um, but yeah, this book where, even though it's very descriptive on the death, it doesn't go into graphic detail of what it does on the poppy war in terms of the bodily injuries. It might say someone got stabbed, um, there was blood kind of seen through bandages or clothes, um, the sensation of broken bones or, oh yeah, that person's got a broken bone, but that's about it. But towards the end, once the main love interest is introduced and gets going, um, it's kind of a love triangle, but you kind of can see where it's going immediately, or at least for me it was. Um, it gets very spicy, very descriptive. You might as well have been, like the few pages or towards the end of the last few chapters, some of it might be just flat out erotica. Um, again, it is a high fantasy. Um, on Goodreads, I believe it's got a 4.6, to reading, um, which I fully agree with. I'd rate it a four and a half, maybe even a five. Um, I'm really interested in reading the second one, which I've actually got behind me on the bookcase because I saw it and I bought both at the same time. Uh, I can definitely see what the hype is about this book. Uh, I've seen more hype about this one than I have The Poppy War, um, but I think The Poppy War was released, released in 2020, whereas this book was this year and has actually made it on to Goodreads kind of finalist board, which I'm really happy that I've read this. Um, yeah, and this book, as I said, kind of took me two days to read it and it would have taken me less if I didn't have to go to a party at one point. Um, yeah, and so one of the really interesting things about both books is it's both people going into power that no one expected them to. Um, so with The Poppy Wars, it was discovering power that people thought had been forgotten, whereas with the fourth wing they knew the power was there but they didn't expect her to be able to obtain it. Um, in terms of 
I don't know if I should rank it by age, but in terms of when I may have ranked both as the same or in terms of if you're interested in getting it for someone else or even yourself, this book I feel like if you can deal with the subjects of the gore and the rape and things like that, then it's a very good book for kind of 20 plus, like I wouldn't class it as a young adult book. Um, but at the same time, if you don't mind, or if you're into horror or things like that, where it does, you know, you're not squeamish, you're not uncomfortable by those things, definitely a good read. Whereas The Fourth Wing, you know, I, I'd quite happily give this to a teenager. Um, I'd have loved reading this in my teenage years, honestly. Um, but then again, in my teenage years, I read the entirety of True Blood. Um, so and that's quite graphic, very pornographic in some cases. So it's honestly just kind of your own vibes and what you're looking for there. Um, I'm definitely interested in reading both the next ones. This one probably first because I've already got it. This one I'd have to go out and buy and I'm currently broke. Um, in terms of the realm of money, I do have a new job. It starts in February. So you guys are putting up with me for quite a while longer and I'm hoping to still make videos even when I'm working. Um, yeah, and I know the next video coming out is probably gonna be a wrap up of this month, maybe even this year. I'd have to look back on the books I've just noted down that I've read. Um, but yeah, if you guys want a deep dive on any of these or another comparison to the books, um, let me know. Even if there's a book that you think from what I've said about either of these two that are similar that you'd be interested in hearing me about, talk about, just let me know. Um, yeah, a bit of a shorter video today, but that's fine. I will catch you guys later. Yeah, so if you guys could like, subscribe and leave a comment, that would mean a great deal to me. Okay, thank you. Bye.